This video is going to talk about aviation weather reports. I will show how to obtain and read METARs, TAFs, and ATIS reports. A METAR is a meteorological aviation report. It's a weather report that tells us what just happened. And this report serves a particular airport in the area surrounding it. METARs are updated hourly. If they're not updated hourly, it's inside that hour, then you get this, a speci or special report. Whenever there's a significant change, you'll get a special issuance. And one thing you'll notice in all of these aviation meteorological reports, the guts of them are identical to one another. It's just the stuff at the beginning and the items at the end that are different. And we'll talk about that. So let's talk about this METAR report, and then we'll break down what each section is. The first is the airport identifier, KMSP, or Minneapolis-St. Paul, followed by when the report was made. It was made on the 22nd at 1253 Zulu. Next is the wind. Winds were 270 degrees at 4 knots. Next is the visibility, 8 statute miles. In the United States and some other places, visibility is in statute miles. Some places it will be in meters. And other times you'll see this visibility given in feet when associated with an RVR or runway visual range. Then we have sky condition, broken 25,000. That means the lowest layer of clouds is broken at 25,000 feet, and that is in AGL or above ground level. Temperature and dew point, 3 degrees Celsius. Dew point is 2 degrees. The altimeter setting is 3002. That's what you would set your barometric pressure and your altimeter to in the Colesman window. And last of all, we have the remarks section. The first section is the type of sensor, AO1 or AO2. AO1 cannot detect the types of precipitation. AO2 can detect the difference between types of precipitation like snow or rain. Next we have sea level pressure. This would actually read 1017.0 or 1017.0. Last of all, we have temperature and dew point in tenths. Temperature is 3.3 degrees Celsius. The dew point is 2.2 degrees Celsius. If they were negative values, you would have a 1 here. And it's not that often that I use information in the remarks section. More often than not, it's nice to know information, not need to know information. You may see items like pressure falling rapidly, pressure rising rapidly, or precipitation started or ended at a certain time. Cool trick time. Take the surface temperature minus the dew point. Divide that answer by 2.5. Multiply by 1,000. That's the estimated ceiling. One thing we didn't cover was the intensity and type of weather. Aviation weather reports will display the intensity of the weather as light, moderate, or heavy. Next, we can have a description of the type of precipitation. You may have this for blowing, showers, thunderstorms, or freezing. Then for precipitation, you may have a descriptor, you may not. You may just have drizzle, rain, snow, or hail, just to name a few. And for hail, it's GR, think granite rain. And after the type of precipitation, you may see obscurations, such as mist, fog, smoke, dust, or sand, to name a few. And to put that all together, you may see something like this. Light rain with mist. You could also see this. Heavy thunderstorms and rain. And if it's really bad, you might see this, which means tornado. But if you're having a good day and it's not a tornado, it's not as bad as what you thought it might be, and it's just a funnel cloud, you'd see this. Now, let's talk about TAFs, Terminal Aerodrome Forecasts. It's a forecast for a terminal area with a five mile radius around the airport. They're updated four times a day in six hour intervals at 0, 6, 12, and 18 Zulu. And if there's an unforecast change in the weather, they will amend it and you'll see a symbol like this on the report. So like the METAR previously, the first thing we see is KMSP or the location. The next thing we see is when the forecast was actually made. It was made on the 22nd at 1126 Zulu. Then we have the time that it's effective for, 
It starts on the 22nd at 12 Zulu and goes until 18 Zulu on the 23rd. And the next part is stuff we've already seen. The winds are 290 degrees, which is true north, not magnetic north. 290 at 4 knots. Visibility P6SM, which means better than 6 statute miles. And the ceiling, 25,000 scattered. And that's what the weather's forecasted to be from 12Z until 22Z. And then from 22Z on the 22nd, the winds are going to be 030 at 5, visibility better than 6, broken 20,000. And then from 5 Zulu on the 23rd, winds are forecasted to be 060 at 6, visibility better than 6 miles, overcast 6,000. Then from 07 Zulu on the 23rd, winds are 050 at 8, visibility 6 miles, light rain, mist, scattered 2500, overcast 3500. And then from 12 to 16 Zulu on the 23rd, 060 at 9 knots, visibility better than 6, overcast 2000. And then the last line of the forecast, from 16Z on the 23rd, we don't have a next time, but we can go up here and see the forecast goes until 18Z. So from 16 to 18Z, the winds are forecasted to be 060 at 12, gust 19, 6 miles visibility, light rain with mist, overcast skies, 1500. And remember the wind direction is the direction the wind is coming from. For example, the bottom line here, the winds are 060 at 12, gust 19. If we turn and face 060 or northeast, the wind is going to be blowing at our face. And even though some weather reports have the winds and those winds are given in true north, when tower gives you wind direction, it's always magnetic. The runway headings are magnetic, and when tower gives you the wind, that's going to be a magnetic heading also. And the last weather report we're going to talk about is ATIS, Automated Terminal Information Service. You'll see this at towered airports. ATIS reports are made once per hour. Sometimes more often if there's adverse weather, an update has to be made. Some airports have an arrival ATIS and a departure ATIS, but other smaller towered airports just have an ATIS where it serves both arrivals and departures. These are normally made by one of the air traffic controllers at the tower, but sometimes they're made by a computer, which is called d -ATIS or data link ATIS, what also is referred to as digital ATIS sometimes. This ATIS report is for uh, Minneapolis. It is a Class B airport. It's a big airport. It has an arrival and a departure ATIS. And this is the arrival ATIS, and we can see that here. This is information alpha. When the next report comes out at 0353 Zulu, it will be information Bravo. The next hour, it will be Charlie, and it'll just keep going. Till they get to Z, the next letter they'll go through would be Alpha. So the winds are 140 at 5, visibility is 10 statute miles, overcast 6,000, temperature 1, dew point minus 2, the M means minus. Altimeter is 3004. They're doing simultaneous dependent approaches to ILS runway 1 to right and ILS 1 to left. And final approach goes over a noise sensitive area, which kind of alludes to fly as quietly as possible. Another item that an ATIS will give is NOTAMs. Runways 4 and 22 are closed. Runway 12 right condition codes 55 five and 5. We'll get to that in a second. At 1520 Zulu, runway 12 left condition codes 55 five and 5. At 1519 Zulu. Hazardous weather information for MSP area available from flight service station. Caution, birds near MSP. Read back hold short instructions. All aircraft taxi with transponder and altitude encoding on. Advise you have information alpha. So earlier the METAR report told us what happened. The TAF is telling us what's going to happen. The ATIS told us what happened as far as weather is concerned, but also gives us information on landing runway and other information pertinent to the airport. So another thing we see is ILS runway 12 right approach in use and ILS 12 left approach in use. And we won't know which approach we're going to be assigned until we get over to approach control and they tell us. 
The ATIS also gives us information on airport NOTAMs. In this case, runway 4 in 22 is closed. We're also given a runway condition code of 5, 5, and 5 for runway 1, 2 right. What this means is the runway is divided into thirds and each section gets a braking report. 6 means it's a dry runway with good braking. 0 means it's a slick runway with essentially no braking effectiveness whatsoever. And in this case, runway 1, 2 left would be identical to runway 1, 2 right. Then we have a caution for birds near the airport and then read back hold short instructions. So when we're talking to ground control and they give us a taxi instruction and say something like taxi to runway 1, 2 via alpha, hold short of Bravo. You have to read back the instruction, but you also have to read back the hold short instruction to hold short of Bravo. In the very last line, all aircraft taxi with transponder and altitude encoding on. So this is our transponder. If the transponder is on, that's mode A or mode alpha. For altitude encoding, we need mode C. And for that, we have to go to the ALT or altitude selection for mode C for altitude encoding on. If you're wondering where you can find all these wonderful weather reports, just keep watching. I'm going to show you where you can find every single one of them. So there's a few places we can get an ATIS report. One is through the aircraft radio, and we can find that frequency here on a sectional chart. You'll also find the ATIS frequency on an airport diagram. The ATIS frequency can also be found on the arrival. Note, since this is an arrival, you have the ATIS, but it's the arrival ATIS. You can also get the ATIS ahead of time using the ATIS app. Currently, this is only available in the App Store, and it only works at U.S. airports with digital ATIS. But to get METARs and TAFs, I use FlightPlan.com. I do use this in the real world. There's other websites that you can get METARs and TAFs from. This is just the one I use. You do not need a login account to be able to use it. You just go to flightplan.com, FLTplan.com, and click on weather. Then on the next page, type in the location. You can type in multiple locations, the four letter identifier, space, the next four letter identifier, and so on. And when you're done, press request. Then this page comes up, and since we used MSP, I only typed in MSP. Scroll down, and you can see METAR reports and terminal forecasts. And you can also press view plain text and it will write everything out and there will not be any abbreviations. And last of all, this page on Wikipedia is very useful. Most of my videos, I use official sources from the FAA. I do not use Wikipedia. However, this page on Wikipedia has pretty much every abbreviation you can think of or see in a METAR or TAF. But this is one of the best resources I've found anywhere on the internet for decoding a METAR or TAF. And I will put a link in the description. One last little bit of advice for METARs, TAFs, ATIS. Practice listening to ATIS reports. Practice writing them down if you need to. As far as METARs and TAFs, practice reading them. It's like anything. It's an acquired skill. You just have to practice it. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. That's all I have. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask.